Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Hidarashi. Uh, we finished chapter one. Uh, last episode kind of intense. Uh, this, the duo found three dead bodies who committed suicide. Uh, allegedly, I don't know, maybe it's set up to look like that. It seems extremely random. <laughs> maybe it's part of the, the syndrome, but like... You, you wouldn't think it is, because why wouldn't they just do the scratchy, scratchy thing, right? So, that's happening. Um, I forgot exactly I, where we left off. I know Miyuki's driving. Er, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of forgot. I, I remember the hint the most when... Where we actually left off during the beginning of the trip. Um, but it does well just start it up. See what's happening. You know, light in the village, ghosts, stuff like that. <laughs> After walking down the heavily forested road for a while, Miyuki chan suddenly came to a halt. I, I guess in any case we're we're going through Hinamizawa, we have no phone calls, so we can call the police about the situation. That was something. She remained silent and answered my question by pointing forward. Who that? Another? Oh, that's a van? Is that a, is that a doggy van? A single car was parked at the base of the stone steps leading up to the shrine. Uh, oh, that's right. They're going to the Frude Shrine. Mewtie's leading them there. And, uh, Akidawa? What's his name? Aragawa? Our Aratawa is like kind of sus, is how would Miyuki know this? But we know Miyuki knows this because of Atlas research, and she probably wants to head to the shrine because it's probably a heavily talked about place. Plus, that's where Atlas had his big talk with Furude. Right, that's that's where we left off. And I bet, you know, car is a bad sign, not because someone's there, but ho they're hoping to not see more dead bodies. And the card didn't look loco, the license plate had the name Nerima written on it. So the car probably belonged to someone who came here from that part of Tokyo. Curse, curse name. I wouldn't, that's what I was thinking. Maybe Tokyo's here. Like, even though it's open, quarantine's over. I wouldn't be surprised if they had like, just like a small, like a one, two, three person unit just to make sure some... Somehow, someone did, doesn't, like, did up evidence about what they did here. I started to wonder if we find another body inside, but I kept those thoughts to myself. I fear that speaking those words would cause it to become reality. Based Miyuki? No futs. For a moment, the faces of those people quickly flashed through my mind those three peaceful looking men and women who passed away in their sleep i said a silent prayer before cautiously peering inside the park car uh hold on one sec all right dial back in i said a silent prayer before cautiously peering inside the park car please let there be no corpses inside it's been a rough day swing swing such silly sound effects, man. And it's totally serious scene. <laughs> I pointed my flashlight inside, but there's nobody in there. I feel like... I wonder... <laughs> it would have been more effective just to like show the light. I don't think you needed a schwin sound for... Uh, scouting with a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, but I'm spooked because it's a white van. That's usually not good. I mean, in... Well, not in general, but it, definitely in Hidarashi contacts. <laughs> not necessarily, though it's maybe in a part in a weird place. I mean, it is raining, I guess. Though I was smiling to myself, Miyuki chan turned to me with a stern look on her face. Then I pointed my light all around the car and even underneath. But there is no signs of human presence. 
誰も乗ってないのがなんでおかしいんだこの車今日ここへ来たばかりって感じです。OK。だったら乗っていた人はどこに行ったんでしょう I guess because it's raining, right? Otherwise, it's an odd question. I mean, if they drove here, they have reason to like, get out and do something. <laughs> it is raining, though. I don't find it that strange. On m e d i a c h a n s suggestion, I turn my flashlight toward the ground. Schwing! <laughs> Indeed, the fresh looking tracks along the muddy ground led straight to the tires. Oh, so there it's. Oh,、uh, well, I was trying to say it's recent, but I guess it's not that recent. It's, it's fairly recent, though, evening tonight, a couple hours ago. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh. No. Maybe, like, I'm just guessing. Like, in the Oishi and a t e s a t r a thing, depending on Oishi, if Oishi was alive or not, you know, and in some of the timelines, how Kuma d a i just dies, or Oishi, from reporting a white ban. d Maybe they went on that, so maybe Miyuki's thinking about that case, because I'm sure Oishi would be super determined to find out Kuma d a i s fate. If he did die in that timeline, but it, you know, this is all spec speculation, so. If this is like the Himitsubushi timeline or the Sumi Horoboshi timeline, that a s t u m a d a i doesn't die there, but still. Miki Chan brushed my question aside, then focused her flashlight inside the car once more. We carefully examined every corner of the driver and passenger seats with our flashlights, then moved on to the bat seat. The bat seat had a few magazines and CD cases strewn about, but nothing particularly interesting. <laughs> Dude, she is so sketchy for my boy. He's so disillusioned. Whoa! What the fuck was that? <laughs> that scared the shit out of me, eh? Anyways. <laughs> really, something on my browser went off? That's crazy. As she said that, <laughs> Yuki Chan ran her gaze up and down the car's interior. Little, little jump stare for me. Despite saying it was nothing important, she continued painstakingly examining the car. We've already established that there's no people here, so what is she searching for now? Feeling it awkward to stand by. Stand idly by. I continued to chat the inside of the car as well. However, I couldn't find anything particularly unusual. A keychain with a cutesy mascot character was dangling in the driver's seat? Keichi? Hello? Is it the. Is, wait, that might actually be Keichi's? The only keychain we've ever talked about in Hidrashi is Keichi's beaver thing. Was it a beaver? I don't know, some funny animal. Based Keichi, a l i v e Keichi universe? Excuse me? Don't dust Keichi's keychain. Unless Rena? <laughs> Although it's pretty common for men to carry cute little accessories like that these days, no need to jump to conclusion. Okay, thank you. Did save, did save. Following Miyuki Chan's suggestions, I stepped away from the car. Miyuki Chan pulled out a map that I didn't even notice her bring. 
then spread it out and pointed the flashlight. She slid her fingers across the map, then stopped at a specific point. Class, it steps. I turned my gaze upward as she said that, and even in the dark, I could clearly made out the st steep staircase climbing uphill. But even though I was certain there'd be a shrine gate at the top, I couldn't see it from here. Sorry, bro. I mean, it is kind of dangerous in the rain at night, but I don't think that's stopping me, T. Miyuki-chan walked forward at a decent pace, then began ascending the stone steps. I ran after her skipping steps to catch up. Yeah, be actually be careful. However, the poor visibility and weeping, weak footing caused me to fall down to my hands and knees. Yikes. My dude. Miki Chan came down the stone steps to where I'd stumbled with an umbrella in hand. I didn't see my feet very well. The rain had a uh, had made the steps slick, and some of the steps were covered in a slippery layer of moss. But despite all that, Miki Chan was able to calmly ascend the steps. It's the Akasaka genes, bro. Don't even try to compare yourself. Don't feel bad at all. <laughs> the constant rainfall left our bodies completely soaked. I started to feel ashamed of myself. Wasn't I the leader of this expedition? Nah, <laughs> dude. You, were, you never were. Sorry, dude. To be fair, I can't blame this guy too much. I also fall for slips a lot. I usually don't slip, but I like I don't fall, but I sometimes do slip on stuff easier, I guess. Usually I am able to catch my footing. Sadly, you know, Canada gets pretty pretty snowy in the winter, so it's usually ice, not water, but it's it's happened before. Slipping on water. Slippery shit. My feet, my feet slipped just like earlier, right as I was in the middle of answering. On the other hand, Miki Chen maintained a respectable pace that she was walking a familiar path. I glanced down at her feet and noticed she was wearing hiking boots. Yeah, she was she was really prepped there. Eh? Clearly, she made appropriate preparations for a mountain excursion, and it's spent no less from someone with plenty of experience in Girl Scouts. Okay, like, dude, I... I <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, this man's sus, but at the same time, he's, like, not sus of her. I feel like that would just add sus. Because didn't he just suspect her, like, last episode? Hmm, I... Sh it should be her first time here, but why does she know the trail so well? I feel like that would add to her, the sus, but... I guess not. Man, I, I do like how... They've redesigned the village a bit, just for this futuristic look. Even climbing the steps, it's all mossy and stuff and this looks a little more beaten down which made sense um but yeah just this level of detail instead of just keeping it the same is kind of cool after climbing several dozen steps i was able to see the shrine gate at the top of the stairs it may have looked quite dignified in the old days but the frame was miserably dilapidated after years of neglect and weather exposure <laughs> Oh, just walk around it. <laughs> I timidly looked up at the shrine gate as I continued walking forward, if you're scared. And the next moment... Ploppy. I heard a single footstep from behind my back. I turned back, but nobody was there. I do think it's not Hanyu, because she should be in another universe, but I'm still trying to just say, Hanyu? They'll probably gonna make Hanyu jokes, because they're funny. 
It's always funny just imagining Hanyu was the one fucking with everyone the whole time. <laughs> Beauty Chen had already passed through the date, but she must have noticed that I stopped moving. She looked back and asked about it, but I brushed her off with a vague answer. Miyuki Chen is walking in front of me, so those footsteps I heard couldn't be hers. Surely. I said that to myself as I walked through the gate and entered the shrine grounds. Plop, plop, plop. <laughs> Again. Miyuki Chen and I should be the only ones walking through the grounds. Then, what on earth are these footsteps? <laughs> it is a little spooky, man. It has a little spookier vibe than normal. As Miyuki Chen said that, she turned and began walking toward the offering box, so I followed behind her. Unless, I mean, I guess Takano technically ascended to a new god at this point, so maybe the rare ghost Takano's plopping behind him. I began to feel frustrated that the constant footsteps seemed to mock me. It's probably just an echo. But even so, my mind focused behind me as I continued walking forward. It definitely felt like something was going on. Plop, plop, plop. Sploosh. I stepped into a puddle. I wasted so much attention on what was happening behind me that neglected... That behind me that neglected the ground by my feet. I wasted so much attention on what was happening behind me that neglected the ground by my feet. I hate that sentence. I feel like it's not right. <laughs> but maybe it is. <gasps> what? What the fuck? I sighed pathetically while turning my gaze down toward the puddle by my feet and was suddenly startled. My feet were deep in a puddle of blood, or a pool of blood, and beside my feet, is that a person lying there? Huh? It was a girl. The corpse of a young girl with her abdomen turned open was lying there and her eyes looked like glass as they stared off vacantly. Okay, so this is somehow a vision of dead Rita, because this is not real, and it sounds exactly like Rita's situation. Maybe. Yeah. The body was partially obscured by the shadows of crow feathers scattered around it. And then all around me, fucking fly in my face. And then, bro, please. I, I know I just talked about winter, but please, winter comes so all these flies can fucking die. It's, it's been so bad this summer. It's actually so annoying. They just fly in your face. Like, they're just trying to get into your mouth. It's horrible. And then all around me, I heard the sound of elderly people chanting a prayer. It's as if... As if... <laughs> Yijian turned back to see me as soon as she noticed the commotion. Now we're gonna look crazy. Miyuki-chan quizzically turned her flashlight down toward my feet, but the only thing there down there was a puddle. Man. That's interesting, though, that he's seen, like, a flashback of the village. That's not... I feel like that's not usually symptoms, but I guess symptoms is just heightened paranoia, so if you are feeling scared about the village, I guess it made sense that you might see something like that. Though it is very accurate to, like, reach his death. The girl I saw lying there a moment ago was gone. I examined the puddle once more, and then the hem of my pants. My pants were plenty soaked, but it wasn't in blood. Nah, we're not, alright. The rain started coming down even heavier, and the raindrops vigorously slammed into the ground all around us. The cloud cover was so thick that the surrounding area was completely swallowed by the darkness. I couldn't see anything. 
I started to calm down and carefully trace my flashlight along my surroundings, but nonetheless, I could see anything noteworthy. I couldn't see anything noteworthy. <laughs> it's not a normal thing to say, but. Miki-chan seemed surprised and started intently surveying our surroundings. But the pounding rain seemed to eliminate any indications. Maybe a trace amount of light poured between the clouds and illuminated the shrine gate or something. And I got its reflection in the photo. Ah, yes, the, the, the moonlight trace. Moonlight trick, where uh, it reflects in a certain angle and it looks like a girl has been uh, mutilated and a bunch of people were praying to her. I hate when that happens in the rain. But could that explain the red hue of the blood and one of the dirt girl's corpse on the ground? Yeah, it's a little, a little strange. Was it really a hallucination? <laughs> okay, dude. Rip. To be fair, I, if I was Miki, I would say that's kind of creepy. I struggled to find the words, so I couldn't say anything. To be fair, you did say, I, sorry, I was hallucinating. It's a weird choice of words. Did you, should have just said, oh, I thought I saw something. Then that just comes off as casual, right? You know, dark in the rain. Oh, I thought I saw something. But hallucinating is like such a strong word. <laughs> I struggled to find the word so I couldn't say anything. But that vision I saw earlier may have stuck with me. <laughs> the people in the van, I'm assuming. Or oh, it's her other objective. Okay, I thought she was just assuming the van people. Unless she's coming here with the knowledge of looking for the culprit or something. A moment after Miki Chen said that. <laughs> so sussy. Uh, or maybe this is him, uh. His paranoia kicking in and he's making things seem more sinister than they are. A wicked smile floated across her face and her eyes began to shine. What was that smile just now? I couldn't understand what Miyuki-chan was trying to say. And who was she talking about when she said them? I looked down at the puddle once more. No matter how I shined my flashlight on it, I couldn't see anything reflected in the water. was that smile earlier yeah she's just getting creepier and creepier dude <laughs> it feels like strange things have started happening since we arrived in hinamizawa and those unfortunate events were what caused this change in her but if that's the case am i next oh man i hope one of the bad endings is not you like killing her from paranoia That'd be super fucked up. <laughs> I started walking forward to shake off the ridiculous ideas running through my head. Just then, I noticed a large broken lantern lying on the ground with some characters scrawled, scrawled on the side. <coughs> it's the festival. ムラ祭りがここで行われていたようです。ドイドラ。神社の境内でか。当時は賑やかだったんだろうな。ここってちょっとした公共施設だったみたいですよ。きっとこの集会所では村のイベントやお稽古事の教室。
Oh, like adult classroom activities. I thought they meant school stuff, which I'm like, oh, I don't remember that, but probably like knitting or something. <laughs> Though I said that, I wasn't particularly interested in Miyuki Chan's explanation. After all, I knew all that before coming here. Okay, so he did know. I was trying to say when he didn't when he said, "Oh, so a festival was held here." I thought he would know like basic research. So that's a big part of the curse killings. <coughs> of course, it wouldn't be so strange for it to know something about this that I didn't know. It might be a bit arrogant of me to say, but I did a fair amount of research on Hinamizawa beforehand, and I'm proud of the information I managed to gather. He is a paranormal researcher. It made sense. Sorry, my body's giving out again. Like last episode, darn it. Uh, wait, let me read this back. What does he mean by this? So how could this woman named Yuki Sor Soromachi have gathered so much information beyond what I could find? Why did he say that? Because he just said he, he already knew this information. I guess stuff before that that happened, like the way to the shrine. But I feel like she hasn't said anything crazy yet, right? I guess the way she's describing it, sure. It does sound more familiar. Again, I do think it's just that she either listened in in Akisaka's research or has taken the mantle after whatever time it's been. <coughs> hmm. Darn it. Moreover, Miyuki Chen described it in a way that seemed like a local describing current events. Like a resident of this village was giving a tour to a group of outsiders. Though I felt bad for her doing it, I was gradually starting to feel suspicious of her. Yeah, you think? She, I mean, I don't think she's bad, but she's definitely sussy. Miyuki Chan finished making an offering, then began walking toward the assembly hall, leaving me behind. How much of that was the truth? It felt like my heart was going to be crushed by the wave of doubt swelling inside. Miki-chan and I came to a halt after walking around the corner. Even though there shouldn't be anyone in the assembly hall, I noticed the light leaking out from the front door. Okay, that's a little... sus. <laughs> Who is it? Who? I mean, I feel like if it was a Oishi, Yuki would know about it. I feel like it has to be Mountain Nods. Everyone... To it's Tatano, dude. Holy, please. The old Lady Tatano. Snow Mora, <laughs> for some reason. I don't know. Miki Chen and I tried to assess the situation, but it was difficult to tell from here. I would assume. Yeah. But it knock, knock, Chad knock, just do it. Yeah, just, just, honestly, don't even knock, just swing the door open. Hado. Clatter. I heard something fall to the ground inside the assembly hall. And then a woman's voice. Tatano. It's actually Tatano. But I couldn't make out what she was saying. Tatana. It's Chia. She's alive. 
Chia could be Rena. Rena only survives in the anime though. Oh, I guess it could be Mion. Just because like the other two arts, Mion survives. So maybe it's just a blessed Mion trip art since these three are connected. I guess. I mean, I guess it's been so long. She probably would have left the hospital by then. No, she died. She died in the hospital. Never mind. But those are two different arts. I don't know. Tatano or Mion are like the only females alive. It's Keiichi's mom. She's out for revenge, though she would literally be ancient by now. Well, not ancient. She'd just be old. Those are the only women. It's Rena's mom. <laughs> it's Rena's mom, or or Rena's stepsister. I forgot her name, but she I got her a lot in the Hidrashi Dacha name. Beauty Champ put her hand on the assembly hall door as she said that. So I quickly reached out and grabbed her hand. Hand touching. You need a Chad. Just go in. She's friendly. Oh no, the clown music. The clown music. Come on, Arakawa. Miki-chan let out a light sigh and looked at me. Then she gave me a bewildered look that clearly said, What are you talking about? <laughs> Actual. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> at least you touched her hand, bro. Arakawa, aren't you the paranormal guy? <laughs> Isn't this your forte? It's not that I'm scared. I was just thinking we need to stay cautious and choose the best possible course of action here. Because I'm not afraid. I'm definitely not afraid. Nice. Honestly, can Akasaka 1v1 a ghost? This is karate. Has his karate mastery reached such heights that it can, uh, it can reach a ghost? The answers, maybe. However, my objections were completely ignored. Miki Chen was brave enough to slide the assembly hall door open in one quick pull. Creak. That moment, I felt something jab into my throat. We died? It's talking up. <laughs> and the next moment someone jumped in from the side and pushed me away, it was Miki chan As I staggered to regain my footing, I caught a glimpse of a kimono sleeve in front of me. It's... Huh? <laughs> what is happening? Oh! It's the Mion! Dude, I was right. I was pretty late, but I was right. Yeah, because Mion was kind of alive at the end of all three, so... Even if this is a separate art from the other two. Um, her being alive again. Somehow. Is based. So we got. We, dude we got Mion of all ages. We got Tiny Mion and Himitsubushi. Mion and Hidarashi. University Mion and Hido and Sotsu. And Adult Mion. In whatever this art's called, the consorts. I think we've seen this sprite of her, but I think I just said it was Akane during our opening reaction. It looks a little familiar, but she does look a lot different than Akane. She must be, like, pretty old, too. Like, well, if it's only 24 years, like, early 30s? Anyways, hello, Mion, looking kind of swaggy. I lightly rubbed my hip where I was hit, then a frightening look ran across my face as I realized what was happening. A woman in a kimono was standing in the wind shadow of the doorway in a blind spot that couldn't be seen from the entrance. There was a magical atmosphere about her that didn't feel of this world. A ghost? The word came to mind, but I couldn't bring myself to speak it. <laughs> the green touched. Or it could be Xion, but in my mind, the whole Mion being alive 
both times. Made me made me think it's more likely to be Mion. Plus, uh, Xian was never really the traditional type. Well, we saw Mian put on traditional clothing sometimes. She pointed the tip of the slender object straight toward Miyuki Chan. What was that? What was pressed against my throat earlier? Miyuki Chan was standing directly across from the woman and staring straight at her. Miyuki Chan was. And the woman continued their emotionless confrontation for a while longer, and the woman was the first to open her mouth. <laughs> yep, that's Mion's voice. Her older voice. I want to hear more of it. Her deep, powerful voice left me awe stricken. I shrank back. However, Miyuki Chen stood resolute and maintained her composure. I don't know, we kind of barged in first. Oh. Actually, it does sound... It sounds more like Akane. Though it's probably... I assume it's Mion. Doing an Akane voice. Or it could be Akane. I don't know. Let me know if you know. <laughs> oh, she did. After letting out a quick sigh, the woman pulled the slender object back and slid it under her armpit. Her sharp eyes darted back and forth between Miyuki Chan and me. Eventually, the tension in her face relaxed. No, it sounds like Mion, but like with an Akane style voice. Cool. Also, why are you dissing? <laughs> Why, why do you gotta take the pot shop, bro? I'm already down. The woman in the kimono didn't answer me. She simply chuckled to herself quietly. A Miyuki chan seemed unstirred by this woman's perplexing reaction. I mean, I guess the light's on, so... I guess there's not a working phone. LOL. That, that also makes a lot of sense. Oh, that's the phone. <laughs> okay. The woman in the kimono had relaxed her tension enough to tease us in an affable tone. Classic Mion. She's close to 40? Sorry, I know Fafo gave me the rundown. I thought he said 24, but maybe he said 27. And Mion was, what, 16? 37? I, I mean, if she's 16, 24... I just, yeah, I would be 40. My math was, like, just really bad. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, it's late, and I'm sick. Copium, sorry. That's that's why my math was bad. Totally not because I'm just bad at math. She was probably close to 40 years old. An inscrutable atmosphere emanated from her entire body, giving her an imposing dignified presence. I was trying to say, she looks a little old for mid-30s, but I'm glad I didn't because it's insulting. But it's, like, right. Not, not in a bad way, but... <laughs> she had a lovely color to her skin, but her finely chiseled facial features had me feeling doubts about her background. At the woman's request, Miyuki Chen and I walked into the assembly hall. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh man, dude, that's a thumbnail. <laughs> it's kind of a lame thumbnail. Maybe a thumbnail. I think they're gonna end it here. I've done shorter episodes until we're fully back to health. But again, better than nothing. Pretty cool episode, you know? Creepy Miyuki. Our boy is getting a little paranoid and with a katana wielding old, well, not old, mature Mion. I feel like it's. That could be abandoned if he freaked out at me and just cuts us down. Um, I am interested in why she's here. 
obviously the Sonos I mean, I guess the Sonos um family wouldn't lose power since Okinomia is not like dead, and most of them were living in Okinomia. It's just the, just like the main, just like uh, some of the uncle, or just I mean, it's just Granny, but probably some of the older ones too. So, I mean, I guess. But yeah, it was Mian. We were right, but we also said like literally every girl in the game. So, <laughs> so, um, yeah, cool, cool, uh, cool. Yeah, I now when I saw, I'm like, it just like flashed in my mind. Like, I'm pretty sure she's in like an opening, but I'm pretty sure I just assumed that was Akane. So, it's cool though. And then Mian of all ages, based, um. It's good to see best girl living to the end on it yeah tonsil arts Mian always lives i mean she dies in the in the i guess in like the epilogue or the bonus thing of last arc but Mian fans Mian starts going up you love to see it anyways thank you guys for watching hopefully you enjoyed and next time well we're chilling with Mian in the rain we'll see if we can get any information any lore drops if she's find out anything why she's here etc etc and yeah until then peace